Hello once again everyone, and welcome back to our latest episode of The Zettel. So you may notice that I am flying solo tonight. That is because, one, Eric's not here, and two, I want to go over hyper detail of how I cast the Shield Howl before we get into the further plays, because as far as the section goes, the Shield Howl section is quite small. Uh, both the Shield Howl and the Shield Howl are relatively short sections, not a ton of plays, but more, a lot of options you can do off of them if you pay attention to either earlier or later things that are spoken about in the zone. So, first off, as far as, both, both comedically because of the actual wording and also just it's, it's a thing, you're going to find a lot of different ways to throw the shield out. Um, so it is the squinting cut. I will kind of explain what I think that means to me as we go, but bear in mind, you, you may look around and find many different answers. You may already have a different answer of yourself. Are any of us right? Eh. Some of us probably are, but you know, until the masters themselves show back up, whatever. So, what is a shield hop? The idea is it is another thumb grip technique, but on the lighter side. The best way of thinking about it is it is a cut that tumbles over and what specifically it gets you. So, another way I'll often refer to it is think of it like an inverted Zorn. So, if I am going to throw a Zorn how, right, so a 30 degree cut from my right shoulder, usually with a passing step, not necessarily always required, right, boom. The shield how, meanwhile, is going to be as that cut is coming out, I'm going to push my thumb up on the interior to let it turn over in my hand. The best way of showing this motion is to think of it like my arm's going out and this momentum is not going to stop. I'm not going to stop then turn. I'm going to just stick my thumb up like we did with the Zerk so that it turns over as it continues to go. My left hand hanging a little bit of stability allows it to now extend a little bit easier. Now what this gives you is it gives you, like I said, that sort of tumbling effect. It's a cut down that then turns over. And specifically what it's meant to do is get either my flat or my short edge engaged with the opponent's sword as they are coming toward me. We'll see this when we get to the plays next week against both an over and against a thrust. So, why do I think it's called this squinting cut and what further things should you do with it? And also a little bit of variation. So you'll see a couple different ways of throwing it. The way I like to throw it is I am basically cutting it over. It's an over till it's not, uh, which is something I've said before, right? Over, 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 turn, right? And that allows me to get my short edge out to that 45. I end up stepping next to my sword as that cut lands. And this gives me a couple different benefits. Number one is compared to my over, which lands about here in my body, by just putting that thumb up and turning the sword over, it has already traveled about an inch further to my left, which in regards to dealing with someone cutting strongly or someone trying to thrust at me, and this controls the middle line, that just by default gives me more presence. The other thing about it is when my tip is pushed out and I need to apply more lateral force, pretty much the only thing I can do is I could push this across, but that isn't really getting me anything, or I can push it up, which does get me something, but I can't always necessarily do that. By having my thumb on the blade and my short edge engaged, I can push that quite far and remain strong because I've essentially got this shield. This is something you see a lot in Messer because of the novel. You do a lot of kind of winding with the flat. And so the same idea is sort of present here. I can apply a lot of force, and I can also shrink or lengthen my arms without necessarily losing strength. Plus, if need be, you can lift this shape up in very little changes. Like compared to from here up where a decent amount changes in my hands and how the sword is being held, this, all the way up and down, the shape is pretty much the same. My hands barely move. Now, some people will also throw this with the thumb grip initially. So you'll see people will hold on their shoulder, they'll turn, and they'll cast this more out like a flat. From that flat, then they'll turn over. That is absolutely bad. It still works, it still achieves the same thing. I personally don't do it, mainly because I don't find it interacts with the sharps as well. You may, of course, do this, and if you catch it on their flat, it'll still have the same glossy effect. But the thing I like about the tumble is that my long edge is coming in. They believe this is an over, and so they're safe. My flat turns, so as it starts to interact, now it's being glossy on my side, and then my short edge tumbles over, either gaining purchase on their edge, or continuing to just widen out, because the edge is wider than the flat, widen out the shape they're making, and it glides it away from me. Now, another way you'll see it is in two-part action. 
wherein you're basically striking down then striking in. We'll get back to that because you can kind of use that as the interpretation for the long for the counter to long point play. So just kind of put a pin in that. Now, how do you get this tumble working for you? The biggest thing about it is to be loose in the hands. The more I get this, just this isn't over. This isn't over. This is a shield. This is a shield. And you notice also my hands aren't going up terribly high. It's basically at the same level it would have been just about here. You can see higher, and I'll get to that again in a second, but the more it's kind of this way and can naturally lift if it needs to, rather than default going high, the better. It can also be something that you choose to cast lower, though that's more akin to using a just a cut with your short edge to achieve a bind, which if you watch the Wallstein section, there is some of that in there. Uh, rather, the Wallstein playlist, Von Baumann's Frank book. Now, why is it called the squinter? What's that about? And this kind of leads directly into why I do this the way I do. In my opinion, the squinter is about your alignment, right? You'll see sometimes people will say you're supposed to focus on their blade, you know, squint at it literally. Get them to believe you're trying to go for their blade and change the properties. I think there is some truth to that but more about the line. I make it look like I think I can get through the center line and I'm willing to try and wedge it. However, as I tumble over, I end up turning very sideways in relation to where my sword was. My sword is still in the same place it was, so if I were to cut and not turn over, especially if I'm trying to wedge something, my sword's gonna end up here. When I cut this and turn, I end up standing next to my sword and the only thing that you're able to see is my right eye looking at where that tip is going. I'm squinting at you. Do I think that is exactly what they mean historically? No, I don't have any proof or basis, but the way it has helped me is it's gotten me to really line the right side of my body up in that straight line with my sword in the middle, my body offline. You can kind of think of this if you subscribe to my hourglass footwork theory, as this is me being on two lines at once, which is not dissimilar to the crumb pile. Um, as we saw before with that, the idea was that I'm still relatively on the middle line, but my sword is coming from a further line. Now it's kind of the opposite, where my sword is in the middle line, but I am the one who's on the off line, and it makes that nice triangular point between my eye and the tip. Now, you can throw this in other ways too. This has all been out from the shoulder. Generally, that's where you're going to see it thrown from. However, you can also do a high version. And this high version is a very subtle one. Um, I find it actually quite useful. Essentially, you can start off with it above your head, and what you're doing is, again, you're still casting. So as far as your left arm is concerned, you're doing that. All your right arm does is just relax so that the short edge comes over. When you combine these two things, it does that nice little turn. So I'm cutting, turning. I think it kind of like a struts out, but unlike how it turns over and is more like a plunging thrust, this does still have enough of the cut into it that you can wedge higher things out of the way. I find that if someone is going to cut a big cut at me and I'm also in a high guard, that rather than dropping down and trying to meet them there, it's not a bad idea for me to go ahead and just shield on the higher line. This can also be used if you see someone is standing more, the catching kind of in a middle guard. Again, rather than having all this power out from the middle line, moving up high and dropping this down onto them, can hit, let you hit them from much, much further away, with a lot less committed as well, because one, I can drop down and defend myself, and two, my sword is very out and very light. I have it committed a lot for myself because I only gave it that little bit of momentum. When they react to this, I have a ton of things I can do. So that's kind of the high shield. Now, back to the normal version though, I'll just throw a couple more and talk through the bits as I do it, and then we'll be done, and next week we'll go over the actual plays. So, uh, let's, let's start off facing so take the shoulder, and we're starting off with an over. Overstep. Now we're going to let that tumble happen. Tumble. 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 And again, make it over tumble. Now you notice that my left hand is a little bit um, on top of the sword for the moment. When I add that side step is when I roll in the final place. Tumble. And I want to make sure it's that short edge getting involved. Long edge, short edge. Tumble step. Now my arm slots in that final place where I'm holding the sword sideways. Tumble step. Over tumble step. Shield out. I'll show it a couple ways. Eh, let's go this way first. So, 
over, overstep, shin hao. Shin hao. Shin hao. And the other way, over, overstep, shin hao. And I will show you even more of this when we are doing the actual plays against the person. But for the most part, it's nothing too complicated. Just like the way I do this work in the Krumpf, it's an over till it's not. And the more you can get this being light and relaxed and not exactly whipping, but like I said, tumbling out of your hand, the easier it will be. I will say if there's one thing that made this a lot easier, and I have a video up on it already, it's learning how to do the thumb grip one-handed with a messer or an army sword or something along those lines, because getting used to letting it float like that really does help so that your, the rest of your body can focus on extension and the power and presence and point aiming can come more from your left hand as opposed to your right. So if you're having difficulty getting that turn, maybe go watch that video and give that a couple tries and it does help. But otherwise, thank you very, very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.